Hi everybody. In this video we're going to talk about motion when you're on the surface of a rotating frame. Uh, specifically our rotating frame is going to be the earth. So this is our picture. Let's see. Let's call this the a fixed frame axis Z. Here's our earth. Here's the origin of the fixed frame. And we're going to be up here. Some angle lambda, and this is going to be our rotating frame fixed on the surface of the Earth. And I'm going to call that, remember our rotating frame was unprimed. Now, last time we came up with this equation for the force as seen from the rotating frame. So it includes MA, the net force in the fixed frame, which are real forces. So these are any real force. And then we have these other terms that came up because we're in this non-inertial frame. So um, this one we call the Coriolis force. This one we call the centrifugal force. Now if you remember, what I did in this case was say we had our fixed frame, our prime frame, and then we had our unprimed frame, our rotating frame. There is some vector that locates the origins of those two together, and I said let's let r equal zero. So that's what we did when we came up with that equation. So now we want to see what do we have to modify if in fact here's our rotating frame, here's our fixed frame, and here's our, in this case, the radius of the Earth. We'd like to know what that changes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, of course, um, go look at our real forces. I'm going to divide the real force up into a force of gravity. So we'd have acceleration towards the center of our Earth. We're going to assume for our purposes right now that the Earth is nice and spherical. And then we're going to talk about other forces, so I'll call it plus S. So this is any forces. This could be, you know, um, impulse forces. This could be friction. It could be um, pushing, pulling, whatever. Impulsive force, electromagnetic. Just not gravity. This is our gravitational force. which is Newton's law of gravity. Mass, mass of the Earth um, over R, assuming, we're going to assume, if you're out here, a little r above the surface, that that's it's, it's much um, much less than big R. And then we'll have in the z-hat direction of our rotating frame. Okay. So now with this drawing we're going to have to add on we're going to add replace our F prime with this but we're also going to have the fact that you can change direction on the Earth, so you're going to have an R, uh, a velocity, R dot, and R double dot, maybe. So here is going to be our force as seen from the rotating frame, and let's call it an effective force, because that's what it really is. So what is it? It's all these real forces other than gravity, plus the gravitational force, and I'll talk about that more here in a second. Um, this force, which doesn't have a name. Then let me go down here and add the Coriolis force. Then the centrifugal force. 
And now, um, this one. Okay. Now I want to go back and I should also say this really, before I go on, should be a minus sign. If you go back and look at how we got this before, the real force was on this side and it equaled everything else. So I should put that, make that a negative sign. Sorry. Okay. I want to remind you we had this from last time. So we found that dq, dt, and seen from the fixed frame, this, this vector, the time derivative in the fixed frame equals the time derivative of a vector as seen in the rotating frame plus omega cross q. So we developed that last time. So if we take dr, dt, seen in the fixed frame. It's going to be this as seen from the rotated frame plus omega crossed r. Now in our rotating frame I think it's pretty clear we don't think that changes. When you're sitting here on the earth as earth spins around as long as we don't go way down here fast or anything as long as the earth's spinning around R is changing, vector R is changing, it's changing direction. But when you're here, it doesn't look like it's changing, so we can make that equal to zero. So we have this, I see in the fixed frame, is equal to So now let's look at if we take the time derivative of, of this. So then we'll have, as seen in our fixed frame, which is equals, well, while you'd see in the rotating frame, but again, we're going to say that that's zero plus omega crossed r dot, but that's equal to this. So omega cross omega crossed r. Okay? So realize what I'm doing. This is our actual acceleration of r as seen from the fixed frame. But now we can replace it with this. Okay? So again, here's what I'm doing. but that is equal to that. Okay. So now, I'm going to write our effective force again as S plus M G naught, gravity, Coriolis force. Um, Minus, I'm sorry, minus, I forgot this one, m omega dot cross r minus m omega cross omega cross r. And now I'm going to have minus m omega cross omega cross big R. fixed frame, rotating, oh, rotating frame, we'll call this the latitude, lambda. Now I'm also going to make the claim that omega, so the earth's rotating around this at a constant omega. So if 
for the earth. So this is in general. Um, but if we're talking about the earth, we have this now. And for the earth, so that means omega dot is zero. Okay. Okay. That means we can get rid of this term up there. So now I'm going to rewrite one final time the effective force on an object at the surface of the Earth. It's going to be any other real forces like wind resistance, whatever, a gravitational force. And now, if you'll let me, I'm going to put the um, centrifugal force here. But look, I have this and then I have this one. I'm going to combine those. Omega cross omega cross little r plus big R. So this is the total distance of the object from the center of the Earth. And then we have the Coriolis force. This is the velocity of the object. Okay. This is our final force, effective force on an object above the surface of the Earth. Now, let's say we have an object like a plumb bob. And again, here's the surface of our Earth. C prime, so omega is also in that direction as a vector. That's omega. Um, here's the center of the Earth. Now, what you really have is um, a plumb bob. So we're holding an object in V equals zero. Object at rest, like our plumb bob. Okay. So we would have, let's look at the forces that are on this. There is mg naught towards the center of the Earth. But it turns out that you're going to get the centrifugal force. It's going to go out this way. And we'll show that in a minute. So they add up together. Of course, this is much smaller than this, but uh, I should have made it about like this. <laughs> so when you add them together, you get the effective force of gravity. This is what we would measure with a plumb bob. It would point down in this direction, not towards the center of the Earth. So we usually include those together, and we'll just call this m g naught minus m omega cross omega cross r plus big R. We'll call that m g. So now you see why I call that g naught instead of g. So this is our effective gravitational force. It includes the centrifugal force. So you can't help if you're trying to measure some, something if you're trying to find, you know, um, vertical by hanging a plumb bob, it's not going to point towards the center of the Earth. Things don't drop towards the center of the Earth. If you just release them for rest, they drop in this direction. Okay. So now we're down to this F effective is equal to real forces are not gravity plus mg minus the Coriolis. All right. So let's talk about the Coriolis force. Okay, so we have omega. So the Earth's rotating around this axis. This is the z prime axis, the fixed frame axis. 
but that also means our rotational axis are moving um, with some angular velocity too. So we can write omega in terms of our rotating coordinate axis. So we'll have omega x, x hat plus omega z, um, z hat plus omega y, y hat. Okay, now let's imagine that we're going to throw something in the x direction. So let me draw the rotating frame, but like this. It's easier for me to figure out what's going on. Um, here's our y hat, here's our x. So, rotating frame. Okay, so let's say we throw our object here, and we throw it, let's put it in the y direction. So V naught Y hat. Let's find out what the Coriolis, Coriolis force is going to do to that. So let's look at omega cross V. If you look at this, what you're going to get is negative omega z v naught in the x hat direction. So our Coriolis force, m negative 2m omega cross v, is going to be m omega z v naught in the x hat direction. So that means th this is going to be deflected in the x direction. So let's say and if we threw it in the y direction, the y is into the page up here. Um, so then it would be deflected in the x direction so if you were on the surface of the Earth and the Earth's rotating like this, um, that direction then is um, our east, so we're going from west to east. So that's how we end up with something that we call um, hurricanes, or if they're in the southern hemisphere, we call cyclones. So imagine you have low pressure So we have this low pressure region here, and let's make this west, east, north, and south. So if particles are moving, the air particles are moving from the west to the east, we know they're going to be deflected towards the south. Okay? That's be towards the south up here on our rotating frame if into the page is going east. And um, likewise, if you do the calculation we just did, but if you were going the other way, the negative y direction, it would de be deflected this way. Um, and then you also find if you go from the south to the north, so if we were going in the negative x direction, deflection would be this way. And if we came from the north, the deflection would be this way. So you start getting this counterclockwise rotation if you have wind coming from all these directions. So produce a hurricane. So this is when we're in the northern hemisphere. counterclockwise. But, and you should check this yourself, if you're in the southern hemisphere, it will go 
the other way. It'll go clockwise. So, low pressure. Here's your Earth. Here's Omega. So if you're down here, Z. Go down here, negative lambda here. That you'll get, um, if you go from the west, it will deflect this way. So that's west, this is north, southeast. Going from the east will deflect it this way. Going from the south will deflect it this way. So you'll get a clockwise rotation in a low pressure zone. Clockwise in southern hemisphere. And it's because of the Coriolis force. Okay. Now I know you've heard that when you flush toilets, they go one way in the southern hemisphere, one way in the northern hemisphere. A toilet's completely different. A toilet has jets that throw the water into the bowl and go in a certain direction. But if you let water out of a sink, a lot of water, and let it go down, you should be able to see the difference between clockwise and, and counterclockwise rotation, depending on what hemisphere you're in. Okay, let's do a problem that Newton did, um, and he provided his solution um, for our drawing of the deflection from, for um, Hook, and it made Hook, uh, Hook found a mistake in it, and of course, and then he uh, gleefully told Newton about the mistake, and it made good, Newton good and mad. Um, so we're going to drop a particle from rest from a, a height above the surface of the Earth. So let's draw our picture again. Here's our representation of, we'll just do part of it because we'll be talking about the Northern Hemisphere. So we're at some latitude, lambda. Here's our Z axis of our rotating frame. It's gonna be my X axis. Here's omega. So, we're going to drop it from rest in our rotating frame. X is zero, Y is zero, but Z will be some height H. Okay, and we have this. We have effective equals S. We're going to assume there's no other forces on it, that there is just gravitational force and our Coriolis force. But now we need to write omega. So um, this is going to be omega z prime at omega, we'll call it omega naught. Okay, well, we need to convert that into our rotating frame. So I'm going to call this one gamma. So omega z would be, so to convert this vector that goes this way into it, and let's just draw all the way down here to make it easier. We want to find the component along the z-axis, and that's going to be omega naught cosine of gamma. And That's going to be equal to omega naught cosine of 90 degrees minus lambda, right? And that'll be equal to omega naught sine lambda. The easy one will be omega y, which is y is into the board. That's going to be zero. Omega x then is going to be omega naught cosine of, let's see, pi minus lambda, I'll do it like that. Here's my x, so. And 
and then that's going to equal omega naught cosine of pi cosine of lambda if I use the addition of angles the sine stuff will cancel out because I have a sine pi and that'll be equal to that's negative one so I get negative omega naught cosine of lambda okay I drew this so you could see I got those angles a little better um, oh this I'm sorry this was gamma straight over to here was lambda so omega Um, you get the cosine of gamma because they that's the angle between Z and W and when I did the WX on here if I go pi minus lambda um, that would give me this line right here So yeah, I take the cosine between this and this, which is this angle right here, and that's pi minus lambda, because this is lambda too. So that's how I got that. Okay. So I have my omegas. Now I need, what else do I need? Velocities, and I'm dropping it from rest, so in the x and y direction, Initially, I expect them to be zero. I expect in the z direction it to be if I dropped it from rest. So for the Coriolis force, I need omega cross v. So I have x hat, y hat, z hat omega negative omega cosine lambda zero omega sine lambda and then zero zero negative gt and that's going to give me negative omega naught these are omega naughts I'm sorry um, negative omega naught cosine lambda times g t in the y direction okay so now here's my acceleration I'm going to also when I do this I'm going to neglect omega cross omega cross r so I'm going to assume that the gravitational force points down towards the center because even though I drew a drawing earlier that <laughs> tried to indicate that it doesn't point towards the center it's very close to the center of the earth this component is pretty small okay and that should be one of our homeworks is to calculate that. So my f effective force, and I'm going to divide by m to get the effective acceleration, would be negative g in the z hat direction. And then I have minus this, so plus omega naught cosine of lambda g t in the y hat direction. And I'm going to integrate twice now. When I integrate the first time, I'll get V, which is going to be, I integrate from 0 to some time T, A effective DT. Um, and let's just look in the y direction. So if I do the y component, 0 to t, omega naught a constant, cosine lambda constant, g a constant, t dt in the y hat direction. 
What do I get? I get... When I do the first time, then I get a T. So I get 2 omega naught cosine lambda G T squared over 2. Um, the 2 actually was up here. I'm sorry, that 2 came from... You have that 2M. I divide everything by M, but I should have had that 2 up there. So there should have been a 2 there. 2 there. So there's the velocity in the y direction, and then the y is a function of time. I do the integration again, and I'm going to get omega naught cosine lambda times g t cubed over 3. So it's going to be flected in the y direction as it goes down. Here's your z as you drop it. Our y was into the page, but let's assume this is our y direction. It's going to be deflected in the y direction, according to that. So if our y direction in our picture up here is to the east, we're assuming this goes that direction. So y is in the east. So when you drop it, it's going to be deflected to the east. So let's let's put in some numbers. Let's see what kind of deflection. Let's say we H is 100 meters. Um, far to Cora. We're at a latitude of about 43.3 degrees. We used to have a sign upstairs. That, that's what it said at least. Um, and omega naught is the rotation. Now you can calculate that yourself, but uh, the rotation rate is 7.3 10 to negative 5 radians per second. So if we put those numbers in, let's see how far it will be deflected. Um, we need to figure out the time it's going to fall. So we didn't have the, the z, but that's just going to be this. Um, say we start up a positive H. So I put in minus plus H. Okay. So to get to Z is zero, the time in Z equals zero equals negative G T squared over two plus H. And then, <coughs> excuse me, um, T equals square root of 2h over g. So y deflected. Um, it's going to equal, I have my one third in there, I have the omega naught, I have g cosine of lambda, and I put in square root of 2h over g, and I cube that, so I'm going to have 2h over g to the 3 halves power. So there I go. I stick in my numbers, and I get 0.016 meters, so about 1.6 centimeters. So a pretty small deflection from dropping it 100 meters due to the rotation of the Earth. But it's doing that because the Earth's rotating as it's dropping. Although, <clears throat> when Newton did the drawing for Hook, he had, here you're on the Earth, he's looking from above, so Omega's coming out of the page. So he was showing that as Omega. He was talking about dropping it, and he forgot that when it's up, maybe it's up on a tower or something, and you're dropping it, it has an initial velocity in that direction, too. 
before you drop it. But we're okay. We said the velocity was zero in our reference frame. In the rotating frame, it was zero. Newton wasn't um, talking about it from the rotating frame. Um, he was with respect to a fixed frame, and, and Hook caught him on that.